23-17 was the first half finish. UVU on top by six. I'll ask you two questions, and you can answer them both. What's one thing you liked that UVU did in that first half, and specifically who kind of stuck out to you in, in terms of playing well for UVU? I think we've both been raving their defensive effort uh, throughout the entire broadcast, and then also just their rebounding and finishing off possessions. Uh, you know, Marcel hasn't done a lot to put anything on the stats, but uh, the way he's controlled the game and kept everybody calm and his presence out there and then also his rebounding, you know, I think Marcel's done a great job of just being the floor general and, you know, controlling the tempo of this game. UVU with the first possession in the second half. It's Dante Williams, top of the key. One dribble, now it's Davis, left wing. Down low into the mid block to Zach Nelson. Two dribbles on Moore. Kicks out to Williams. He's on the baseline now. Try to get it down to Nelson. Could have get it down there. Now they do. One dribble. Trying to pass get out a shot of it. Off, get a One shot of the off. shot clock. Williams, deep three. Off the back rim, no good. Moore with the rebound. Yeah, traditionally the Wolverines have struggled to start. You know, I just remember back to our games against Utah State to get the half going right. He's got to take it as a brand new ball game. Perkins from the right corner, no good on the three-pointer. UVU coming the other way. Davis down the free throw. Dish Great off dish. to Evans, and Evans finishes for UVU. Great find by Marcel as he's trying to give uh, Utah State a little dose of their own medicine transition-wise and push it up the floor, and great find for him down low. 25-17. There weren't a lot of easy buckets in that first no, half. No, there wasn't. The defense had been packed in, and as Utah State has shown so much zone, that was a nice play by Davis to suck in the defense and dump it off to Evans. That's Chris Smith driving down the lane, in and out. Bruneal keeps it alive. Utah Valley looking for their first double-digit lead of the game. Davis walking it past the midcourt line. Glad the basket at that end hasn't changed. <laughs> that one rolled right out for them. Evans cutting and finishing at the rim. Brendan Evans back-to-back -back buckets. Wolverines 27-17. Largest lead of the game by either team at 27-17. Ten-point advantage. Deep three by Chris Smith. That's no good. Rebound, Marcel Davis. I mentioned this in the halftime show, but Utah Valley has been sensational on the glass. Yeah, definitely a great way to close out possessions, and, you know, that's what's going to spark Utah State if they can get any second-chance baskets or anything like that as, as Zach shuffled his feet there, trying to, again, just do a little too much as the offense gets a little stagnant for the Wolverines. 27-17, back-to-back buckets out of the break by Brendan Evans. He had no points at halftime and two quick ones here in the second half. Utah State still struggling to find their stroke from outside. They're 2 of 11, 5 of 28 overall. Loose ball foul on Mitch Bruneal. I think they called that one on Zach as oh. Colette tried to post up strong there and uh, Zach caught him on the back side and you know, again, that's such a call that could go either way. It's so physical down there. You just kind of question why refs even call those things sometimes. That's the first personal for Zach. Almost could have picked up a second one there as him and Colette went for a jump ball near the midcourt line. No call. Perkins, top of the key. 20 on the shot clock. He gets a screen from Colette, driving the, down the left side of the lane, kicks it out to Moore. Dead on three-pointer for Jalen Moore. In and out. Rebound, Dante Williams. Moore still without a field goal in this game. Yeah, the Wolverines really staying at home, not, you know, pressuring out beyond a step or two, beyond that three-point line and really packing it in, which has, you know, really made Utah State work for any baskets tonight. Davis to Bruneal at the free throw line. He now goes baseline, kicks it out to Evans. Left elbow, two dribbles, backing down Chris Smith. There's a reach and a block by Chris Smith. Great defense by Chris Smith as Brendan tried to use his strength to overpower him, but he held his ground in defensive position. Utah State with the basketball. It's Smith in the corner, down low to Colette. He only has two points. Double team coming. Nelson goes out to the basketball, and it's a turnover. Great defensive play there from Davis and Nelson to get the ball out of Colette's hands. UVU went, it was Williams going for a layup, had a nasty crossover, but Colette recovered for the block, and we have a blocking foul on the other end. Darius Perkins down the lane drew the foul. Yeah, Perkins does a great job of, when he gets in transition, when he gets close to the rim, he does a great job of finding guys, pieces of guys' body to put pressure on the refs to make a call, which, which Dante should have done in his last possession there as, as Colette made a great block coming over from the weak side there in transition. 
Perkins on the free throw line on the year. Perkins is a 64% free throw shooter, misses the first. Yeah, both teams have really struggled from the free throw line as, well, the Wolverines 3 of 8, and that miss right there makes Utah State 5 of 8 from the line. And, you know, with being such a low-scoring ball game, you know, these, these points are going to come back to haunt them late in the second half. 27-17. Utah State on a long-scoring drought. They have not scored. And there is a bucket from Perkins. One of two from the line. 27-18. Davis walking it past the midcourt line. Now it's Nelson, left wing three. Holding the ball, defended by Moore, now dribbling. Top of the key, Davis, right wing. Gets a screen from Nelson. Nelson rolls. Davis down the left side of the key. Back out to Jaden Jackson. Jackson back to Davis, left wing. Bruniel on the screen. Davis driving down the lane. Oh, and they're going to get an offensive foul on Davis. See, they got to be more consistent, I think, with the refs on that call. Is you know, I mentioned before, Perkins has done such a great job of getting into guys' bodies and kind of making them bounce off. But uh, Marcel, unfortunately, uh, got the offensive foul call in there, which... You know, again, it, it goes either way, and it's a tough call for the official. The bucket did go for Davis, so no two points there for Davis and UVU on that attempt. 27-18, Harris into the game for the Aggies. It's Smith at the free throw line. Cut off by Bernil. He'll pass it out to Perkins. 20 on the shot clock. Perkins gets a screen from Harris. Now it's Moore at the free throw line. Pull up Jay and Moore with his first field goal of the game. 27-20, UVU. Yeah, almost the 15th. 15 minute mark here in the second half and Jalen finally gets his first bucket and uh, hopefully that does not get him going for the Wolverines. Carr, now it's Jackson dribbling from right to left is Bruniel, left baseline, Jay, that's no good, follows his own shot, gets the rebound, goes up, blocked by Harris. We have a jump ball. Possession arrow in favor of the Aggies. 27-20. UVU led by six at the break. They've increased that lead by one here in the first portion of the second half. We're going to take a break. Thanks for joining us. This is Wolverine Basketball on 960 The Zone. Uh, it's kind of gone back and forth. Wolverines had a four-minute drought. Now, well, well, three minutes going right now, the four-minute drought I was referencing was in the first half there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as Utah State, you know, started out the second half cold, that's what's really hurt the Wolverines in the past few games is they're right with the other team, you know, but closing down the stretch in the second half, they'll hit these, you know, again, four to five minute droughts where, where they just can't have those down the stretch to finish out these ball games. And last year they had you and yeah. Ben, you know, a couple four year players who they could go to in key moments. Who do you think that they should look at in a moment like this? Right now, I definitely think they need to get Mitch going. Uh, get something that hit for him at the high post because Mitch is so strong with those those baseline drives for him. But uh, and again, a veteran guy that shouldn't be afraid to take the shot as uh, ball bounces around there off of a Utah State miss, and uh, they're gonna give it to the Wolverines on this one. Utah State, and you know, both teams for that matter have had a couple looks at the front of the rim that have just not went in. 27-20. Yeah, Utah State right now is shooting six for thirty for the game. That's twenty percent on the on the game here, and uh, that's well still, below their average. Still within seven points, which you know, hopefully the Wolverines can stretch this thing and take advantage of their their poor shooting. Hamilton down the lane with the left hand off the rim, but he's going to get an offensive rebound, and Jackson will drive down, get stopped. Hamilton swings it to Ross. Now it's in the corner, Bruniel, left corner. And we have a loose ball foul on Sean Harris as Harris and Hamilton were battling in the low post. Again, those bigs are being so physical with each other down there, and that's what's made the game so difficult and, you know, without you know, so many easy baskets because they've been so uh, physical with each other. Carr gets it in to Jane Jackson. He'll hand it back to Carr, and he'll set up the offense for UVU. It's Bruniel now, right wing back to Carr. A good 15 feet off the three-point line. Now dribbling right wing. Bruniel has it. Top of the key. Two dribbles defended by JoJo McGlaston. McGlaston pokes the ball away. Bruniel gets it back. Gets his dribble. Baseline J for Hamilton is no good. Rebound Jalen Moore. Yeah, again, especially on that possession, I would like to see Mitch being a little bit more aggressive in that late shot clock situation. And uh, the Wolverines need a best basket desperately as uh, 
Smith drives and gets contact against Chad. And he'll go to the line. Chad Ross on the personal foul. That'll send Utah State to the line. Ross picks up his third personal foul. Utah State is 6 of 9 from the freebie line so far. They trail by 7. As we're getting our little updates here, it's been 4 minutes and 30 seconds from the last Wolverine basket as they've gone 0 for their last 5 here as uh, Smith uh, misses his first attempt on that one. I think he made his first attempt, actually. Okay. 27-21, Zach Nelson into the game. It's Nelson, Bruniel, Jackson, Carr, and Ross for UVU. Yeah, I think whenever Colette or Zach come into the game, uh, both coaches are going to send the other. And uh, <laughs> yeah. we saw that right there as they continue to match up throughout the rest of this game. Colette, only with two points. I, I, it still boggles my mind because he had, he had 32 against USC last time out. UVU defensively has been unbelievable on Colette. Yeah, they've doubled the blocks, and they, uh, they've made him really difficult to get any type of positioning down low as he's getting kind of, you know, three or four feet off the block there, which is where he'd want the ball ideally. Bernil at the free throw line, dribbles into the corner, and we have a reaching foul on JoJo McGlaston of Utah State. UVU, that's uh, Utah State's second team foul of the half, UVU with four. No one really nearing the bonus situation here. Let's see what UVU can get out of this uh, end out here as they reset the offense. It's Carr, defended heavily by Bolton. He's near got the, half the count on him to get rid of that thing. Nelson now with the ball. Harris on defense, back to Carr, left wing. Looking for Jackson in the corner. Back to Carr, top of the key. It's Bruniel. thought about the three. Drives down the middle of the lane, up with the shot, and he draws the foul. That's exactly what Mitch needed to do right there. They, they tried to get Zach posted up down low, which, again, would have got the Wolverines going. But uh, Mitch, great recognition as the, the Utah State has really picked up their defensive pressure there on the perimeter, and Mitch blew right past him. Mitch Bruniel on the year, 69% from the free throw line. He's one of two tonight, and his third attempt is no good. Twenty-seven, twenty-two. Bernil will have another. Five-minute scoring drought for Utah Valley, but Utah State only shooting 19%, unable to get back in it. And Bruniel misses the second, and it off goes their foot. Great hustle there by Chad on low. Off the foot of Julian Perry, and three of nine from the free throw line for UVU. Yeah, I think Mitch must have shot 80 or 85% last year from the free throw line, and I think he's just, you know, again, this needs to see a couple go down as his stroke looks terrific out there tonight. Carr with it, defended by Bolton. Good defense by Utah State. He gets it to Bruniel. A nice crossover, gets a cutting. Ross, and he's blocked. And Ross goes down. Colette lets him know how he feels about that block. And a transition three the other way for Utah State. Big sequence for the Aggies. Perry on that three-pointer. Yeah, that was a big block right there. And then also kind of opens the basket here. And as uh, Coach Huntaker takes the time out to stop the momentum here of the Aggies. 27-25. Aggies on a 5-0 run. You're listening to Wolverine Basketball on 960 The Zone. Getting fired up a little bit. Utah State on a big run, 5-0. They've cut the Wolverine lead, which was once 10, down to two. Utah State with a monster sequence a moment ago with Colette on the rejection and then the three-pointer the other way by Perry. Yeah, that three uh, actually put him over to an 8-0 run over the last four minutes. Which, wow. You know, just this route by UVU is, you know, approaching six minutes as uh, Marcel takes inbounds pass here. Williams in the right wing, getting it to Davis. Screen, no, Nelson will have it. Pump fakes the three, Harris stretches out. Now Nelson drives down the lane with the left hand off the window. That's a gorgeous drive there from Zach Nelson. That made Bill Walton's comment look uh, pretty true right there. Strong take from Nelson as he pump faked the three and went down the right side of the lane. Long two for the Aggies. That is an air ball from JoJo McGlaston 
the mall section giving it to him. He made that three to kind of spark the Aggies transition or spark their run here and uh, Wolverines didn't let him get a clean look on that one. 29-25, Davis crossing the midcourt line for the Wolverines, gets the call from Hunsaker. Goes left wing now, it's Nelson. Harris Holding putting in. a lot of pressure on Zach there on the perimeter. Davis gets the screen from Nelson, takes it, drives down the lane, passes out to Nelson, right wing three, in and out. And then it's deflected out of bounds by Chad Ross. Utah State with the ball. Chad's done a great job of not giving up on any of these offensive rebounds as he's trying to chase them all down. And uh, Zach, again, those shots are all right there, and he's feeling good about them, I think. I th you know, 10 minutes left, we, uh, we need one of those to fall. 29-25, 11.38 left here in the game. Thanks for listening on the WAC Digital Network and also 960 The Zone. Zach Nelson a moment ago with a beautiful drive to end the UVU scoring drought. Aggies trail by four. This is going to be a tight finish down the stretch, I think, Holden. Yeah, I think as I'm just counting the different players that have entered the game, which is a little different than I think for both Utah State and Utah Valley. As Utah State has played nine different guys, and Utah Valley has had 10 or 11 here different guys. They're both, it's early in the season. They're both trying to figure out their identity and figure out lineups and things. But, uh, you know, d defensively, again, I think that's what's going to come down to is uh, we haven't even broke 30 points yet, and we only have, you know, 11 and a half minutes left in the game. But, uh, I think uh, the Colette and the Nelson matchup down low is, is what's going to be the stability in the game because both are going to try to look for, for easy baskets and something to, again, find a, try to find some flow to tonight. Moore, top of the key. Now it's Bolton, left wing, down to Colette. One dribble, knocks over a Wolverine defender, misses the layup, and Nelson gathers up the rebound. That's a, that, there's a few times he's had good looks there and hasn't been able to put it in. Yeah, but every time he's got a body on him and the Wolverines are doing a great job of rotating to, to keep any interior passing out of, out of play. Only three second chance points for Utah State on the evening. Again, UVU with a nine point, or a nine rebound advantage, excuse me. It's Williams in the right corner, one dribble, looking for Nelson down low. Good defense, can't get it there. Now it's Davis, six on the shot clock. Into the lane, down, kicks out, and we have a loose ball foul. Looks like that was number 20, Bolton, on the uh, Marcel Davis drive down the lane, and that'll reset the shot clock. Yeah, I think it got down to five there on that drive as Marcel kind of got himself up into the air to, to hit Dante, I think, on the wing. Davis will inbound underneath the basket, down low to Nelson, and it's knocked out of bounds by Jalen Moore. They had him on that one. Zach was uh, caught around or slipped that ball or the screen for Dante and was wide open under the rim. Davis will inbound again from the baseline. It's Ross, right corner. Couple jab steps from Ross, now dribbles. That's a great decision, trying to just get it out of the corner and again just save the possession and not try to create something out of nothing. Williams, right wing three, gets it from Davis. Now it's Nelson, top of the key. Couple dribbles, now into the wing area, back to Williams center. Left Nelson and a kick ball by Jalen Moore. That was a great job on Peary down low on Mitch as they tried to isolate Mitch down low on the block and Peary kept his front and held his ground as uh, Mitch tried to post up on that last play. 15 on the shot clock, Nelson to inbound underneath the basket. It's Ross in the right corner, he'll take the long two, that's no good. A fight for the rebound and Moore tips it to Perry. And now it's Perkins. Smith down low to Colette. Nelson gets a piece of it. Colette, one dribble up. Fouled and one. David Colette. That's his first field goal of the second half. Showing a little spirit after that one. You mentioned after the block. He uh, didn't, uh, didn't pass up the opportunity to look back over his shoulder at Chad to let him know that he got that one. And he's been working all night. So I'm sure that and one feels pretty good for him. 29-27. Colette with four points. He'll have an opportunity for a fifth from the free throw line, 10-13 remaining. Wolverines have led for the entirety of the second half. Colette might be bleeding from the lip, getting some uh, assistance from the tr head trainer for Utah State. 
UVU still, they have that Nelson bucket, but still struggling offensively. What can they do differently to get back into that rhythm that we saw the last five minutes of that first half? Well, I think Marcel and uh, Dante and Alex Carr on the perimeter really need to put a little bit more pressure on these guards as Utah State's really gotten up into uh, the Wolverines defensively and have pressed out even to the, you know, beyond the NBA three-point line. And they just need to be more aggressive and trust their attacks to the rim and you know, try to put a little pressure on the refs to give them a call to get to the free throw line and get a little, you know, momentum going to close out this game. Colette misses the free throw. Ross and Evans battle for it and then keep it for UVU. 29-27. Ten minutes left. Davis into the front court. He goes from right to left wing. Again, they're back in that 1-3-1 one, one zone there. Is Dante <laughs> Williams, nothing but net from the right corner. He's huge had, shot. He's huge had two shot. big three-pointers so far in this game. Yeah, both have come when the Wolverines have needed it out of a drought, and hopefully this can uh, fire them up, and uh, again, we can close out this game. Perry down the lane, gets the bucket to go. He drove left side baseline, got bumped, drew the whistle, finished the play, and he has a chance for a three-point play. Yeah, the Aggies all night have really, you know, rejected that screen, as you had mentioned. And they're going away from it and attacking a baseline, and it, Chad was a little late coming over on the help defense there. Nelson in for Chad. Ross, Evans, Williams, Nelson, Carr, and Davis on the floor for UVU. Perry on the free throw, and it's good. 32-31, I believe. Mm-hmm. I think that half. put it to 30 with uh, Dante's oh, three. That right. stretched it a little bit more. And that, uh, I wasn't a math major holding <laughs> on. I <laughs> well, I, uh, I'm an accounting guy, so uh, I'll let you, I still I'll struggle. Let, I, I got a calculator you, over here that we can use. I'll so let, I'll let you do need. the math. <laughs> Davis down the right side, and we have a loose ball foul on his drive to the rim. He's been looking to get to the rim the last few possessions. Drawn a couple fouls. But Glaston will come in for Perry on the Aggie side of things. Again, when they extend their pressure so much like that, it's, you know, if you can get one step on them, then they're beaten. It's so hard to recover without getting foul calls. And if we can get into the bonus here early, that'd be a great advantage for Wolverines. Dante Williams down low to Evans, and we have a reach on Colette. He can't believe it. Colette now with three personal fouls. One more before uh, Wolverines are put in the bonus. Both teams have six team fouls. But I know at this point, with Utah State shooting 9 of 13 and Utah Valley 3 of 10, is the bonus is that a weapon? Yeah, that's a good point there. I think, again, they've all been right there. Their free throws have been in and out. And I think if they can just put a string together here and, and get the right people at the foul line, we can extend this lead. The best free throw shooter on the Wolverines is Dante Williams at 81%. Davis to Nelson. Now it's Carr, Davis right wing. Nelson sets the screen, slips back, Davis down the lane, spins in with the left, no. Tapped out and collected by JoJo McGlaston. 32-30, Aggies can tire take the lead. McGlaston down the lane with the left, no. Strong rebound from Brendan Evans, taking it away from McGlaston. Great job by Zach Nelson of being straight up and maintaining his verticality. And uh, again, those guards are putting a lot of pressure on him in transition. Davis. About eight feet off the three-point line. Top of the key, now it's Nelson, defended by Harris. Right wing, down low to Evans, one dribble. Into the middle, up with the right, no! Gets his own rebound. Swinging it, it's Davis to Nelson. Now on the right side, it's Williams. Gets cut off baseline, back to Nelson. He's got a clean look from three, in and out. That kind of, you know, shoves his hair back right there in disbelief that again, another one that's just right there rims out on him. Perkins, mid-range J is no good. Cleaned up by Brendan Evans. And Davis will walk it down, passing the midcourt line with a little under eight minutes to go here in Orem. Low scoring affair between the Aggies and the Wolverines. UVU has never beaten Utah State. They lead by two. Davis down the lane, ball's poked away. Harris with the steal. And he'll pull back and Utah State will pass the midcourt line into the front court as Perkins, they'll set up their half court offense. Perkins left wing, and he passes it straight to Williams. And there's a late whistle there. Looks like it was a kick. 
Yeah, I think both teams were surprised by that one as they thought the kick ball was going to be called. And I think if they wouldn't have stopped, the ref probably would have just let it roll. So definitely a missed opportunity right there for Wolverines. Confusing play heading into the break. Wolverine still on top, 32-30. to You're listening to Wolverine Basketball on 960 The Zone. In Orem, Utah, 32-30. Both teams still shooting pretty low percentages. Utah State at 24%. That's about half their season average. UVU at 30%, but UVU is two of the last 13 from the field. Yeah, both teams are just struggling from the field as they can't get anything to go. And, you know, we've, we've praised it all night. That defense, they both have not lost their defensive energy, which is so hard to sustain for 40 minutes of a game. And, you know, with, with seven and a half left, we'll see if that holds true for both teams. But uh, again, you know, the Wolverines 13 to 44 right now for just under 30 percent, and nine for 38 for 24 percent for the Aggies right now. So, what what's going to be the difference coming down the stretch here, Holton? Well, I think who's going to make free throws or not as the game gets closer and tighter, and defensive energy picks up, and there's going to be more foul calls as. Uh, is that Smith drives to the line, or I'm excusing that's five right there. That's Peary as uh, Zach again late coming over gets the foul call there. But uh, yeah, I think if the Wolverines don't make their free throws down this stretch and uh, Utah State does, or, or vice versa, yeah, you know, I think that's going to be the determining factor of the game. Nelson picks up his third personal foul. Free throw is good by Julian Perry. It's 32 31. Foul updates for both teams coming. Marcel Davis with three personals, Chad Ross with four, Zach Nelson with three, and Colette, David Colette with three for Utah State. Both free throws are good for Utah State. It's tied at 32. Yeah, as we're getting our little red flag indicator again, the Wolverines on a, a three-minute drought since that, uh, was it the Dante Williams three? Bruniel for three, and Got it goes down! Mitch Bruniel from deep! Great flare screen by Brendan Evans. Caught, uh, caught Peary off guard there and freed Mitch just for a split second. Every time the Wolverines have needed a bucket, it's Williams or Bruniel hitting a big time three. Jalen Moore spins in the lane, misses short on the jumper. And Utah Valley. Brendan did a great job of holding his ground and uh, Moore wasn't quite ready to meet that wall and put him off on his backside there. Bruniel comes off to Evans' screen. It's Nelson, top of the key. Try to go left, now dribbles right, still looking. 18 in the shot clock, it's Evans. A mid-range left elbow, J. That one is long, no good. Scooped up by Moore, and Moore is coming the other way. He finds Perkins, thought about the three, drives into the lane, jump stop, kicks out, swinging it. It's Perry, left wing three. And Utah State answers. This is going to be a fun one down the stretch. Yeah, that was great ball movement right there. Is, uh, they definitely sprayed that thing around the perimeter, and you know, Perry knocks down the wide open jumper. Davis in the half court for UVU. It's Williams now. Right wing three, about four feet off the three. It's Davis, top of the key, holding the ball. No pressure from Perkins. Now it's Nelson. He'll take the left wing three, and he answers. Back to back to back threes, two coming from UVU. I think this is definitely showing Zach's maturity, as I think in the past with so many balls that have been right there for him, he would have you know, stop shooting, but to his credit and to his maturity, he's definitely kept shooting that basketball, and the Wolverines are going to need it. Smith down the lane, and we have a loose ball whistle. That'll be one and one for Utah State. He missed the layup. No foul on the shot. He's going to put Smith to the line for one and one here, and uh, again, as they're both in the bonus now, it's going to come down to this free throw shooting. Smith on the year, 75% for the evening. He's two of two. Smith with eight points and four rebounds. Smith and Perry are the only Aggie players to hit three-point buckets. 38-35, UVU leads with 537. Unfortunate that UVU could not clear that rebound there as they forced a miss and Smith makes the first free throw. Which is only, as I'm looking at the rebound stats here, it's only the I think second or third offensive rebound, third offensive rebound of the game that they've given up. And, you know, it comes at a crucial time in the game as we're trying to close things out here. But a, a big miss right there by, by Smith that couldn't finish out the, 
the second free throw. Davis with the free uh, with the basketball, excuse me. Still hung up on that free throw. Nelson at the left elbow, holding it, defended by Moore. Down low to Davis. He is blocked. Big time block from Julian Perry. Aggies coming the other way. It's Moore. And we have a blocking foul as Nelson tried to step in and take the charge. That'll send Moore to the free throw line. Yeah, I think that was the right call there. Zach was still sliding, but uh, you know, a big play by uh, was that Perkins that got Marcel on the block down there. Marcel was, you know, wide open there for a second coming off of that back screen, but just showed the ball a little too much and exposed it and uh, got it swatted back at and him. That was close. I was doing some lip reading. Zach Nelson was asking the official, was he late coming over there? And that appears to be the reason. 38-36, more on the free throw line. His first free throw is good. Moore now with seven points. Moore and Colette, only 11 points combined. They average 30 points a night. Wow. He makes both, tying it at 38. Yeah, it's definitely, those two guys have definitely been a, a focus of the Wolverines defense and have drawn a lot of attention here tonight. Davis into the front court. It's Dante Williams, right wing. Handing it to Nelson, and Nelson draws the block call. That's Colette. That's his fourth personal foul. And Nelson to go to the free throw line. Nelson for the season. 77%, second best for UVU. Yeah, we'll see if, uh, if Coach Morrill keeps Colette in the game here with five minutes remaining and four, four fouls as, uh, as Harris gets ready to check in. Uh, I guess that answers that question pretty quickly. 38-38, 5-0-1 left here in Orem, where UVU packed house here in the UCCU Center trying to get their first win against the Aggies. Nelson's free throw goes down. Nelson now with 10 points, four rebounds and an assist. I'll make that 11 points. Three Wolverines in double figures, Nelson, Williams, and Bruniel. Second free throw on the way. He gets a pair. Couldn't have picked a better time to knock two down. No, yeah, and hopefully that gives the other Wolverines a little confidence to, to see both of those finally go down and we can uh, keep making big free throws down the stretch. Harris swinging it to Perkins. Now it's Moore. One dribble down the lane. And we have, I think we have an off. No. They're calling on the ground there. I think okay. Brandon was a little late. Got him with the push there. But again, that's going to send him to the line, even though it was called on the ground. I don't think that quite puts him in double bonus. I think that does right there. That puts Wolverines at, at 10 team fouls, and Utah State with seven. Moore just made a pair last time down. He has eight points. Six of six from the line, but one of eight from the field. That free throw is good for Moore. 40 to 39. We couldn't have asked for a more exciting uh, finish, though, to this thing. No. The free throw is short. Rebounded by Brendan Evans. Wolverines hold a one-point advantage. They have the basketball. Davis getting the play call from Coach Hunsaker into the front court now on the left side, or right sideline. Utah State doing a great job of pressuring any catches on the perimeter of the Wolverines. Definitely taking the timing out of their offense. Bruniel gets it stripped on a drive to the hoop. Utah State coming the other way. It's Smith. Davis falls down, and Smith finishes the layup. We're going to have a timeout. It's 41 to 40. Not sure if it's a full or 30-second timeout. We'll find out really quickly. Looks like they're a, staying. Yeah, it looks like a 30. We'll stay here. 41 to 40. What does UVU need to do offensively down the stretch, Holton, to get this win? Well, offensively, again, I think they just need their guard play. They need to set better screens. They're not, the bigs aren't freeing any of them up when they come off of those baseline cuts or those wing catches have been extremely difficult, and it's making the Wolverines start their offense beyond the three-point line or beyond the NBA three-point line, which makes it extremely difficult to make any type of a scoring pass. And uh, I think the guards just need to be aggressive as they're in the bonus now. And again, even though they haven't shot the free throw very well, it's just going to take the pressure off of them and uh, it should open up more 
cuts and passing lanes as we close this thing out. All night long, UVU has had timely buckets with their backs against the wall. They face a similar situation here with Utah State taking their first lead in the second half. Yeah, I'll see if uh, Dante or Zach Nelson can come through again for us. Nelson, right wing. Now it's Dante Williams in the corner. One dribble, now it's Davis to Nelson. Dribbles into that left wing area, now back to Davis. Jab step, fakes the three, down the lane, gets by his man, up at the right, no good. Rebounded by Sean Harris. Yeah, again, that contact that they were calling earlier wasn't called on that drive right there for Marcel as he was just a little short on that layup. Perkins into the right wing. Now it's Moore. Thought about the three. Perry gets the screen for Moore. Harris, right wing. Now to the corner. Chris Smith. Smith to Moore at center. Looking for Perkins. Davis denies the ball. Now it's Harris in the right wing to Perry. Williams defending for UVU. Perry, elbow jumper is no good. Nelson on the rebound. 3.20 to go. Marcel Davis into the front court. Great defense there on that last position on Dante as uh, Perry tried to get something going late shot clock. Nelson, pump fakes the three, jab step. Another pump fake, puts it on the floor, down the right side. No whistle, and Moore is going the other way. Got to get Perkins. back match up in transition here. Perkins down the lane, Davis defending. Great defense by Marcel. And a rebound by Brendan Evans. Refs are letting him play down there. Yes, they are, as the Wolverines push it here in transition, see if Marcel gets something to go to the free throw line. And he's fouled. Marcel Davis takes it to the rim, knocked down, and he'll go to the free throw line. 2.40 to go. They're gonna push this one to a full timeout, it looks like, for the media, but uh, Colette and uh, number 20, Bolton getting ready to check back into the game to finish things out for the Aggies. When we come back, Marcel Davis will have the opportunity to give UVU the lead. You're listening to Wolverine Basketball on 960 The Zone. With one point game and two minutes and 40 seconds left, as it should be. And, uh, you know, I'm just again, looking over the stats here. If, if you would have told me to start the game, and the Wolverines were going to shoot 30% from the field and 41% from the free throw line and have a chance to take the lead with <laughs> yeah. around three minutes left, I, I would have probably laughed at you. But, uh, again, we, we had mentioned during one of the breaks that this is definitely playing, that the pace of the game is definitely playing into the Wolverines' uh, hands as uh, they've been able to control the tempo and uh, really hold, put the brakes on Utah State in transition. Wolverines average about 58 points a game. Utah State at 70. I don't think anyone's getting to 58 in this game. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised. Oh, I guess we, we combined, we can maybe make it. You know, the, d the defensive effort, though, has been superb all evening. We've talked about it several times. As Davis makes the first free throw, tying it at 41 with 2.40 to go. There's just been great. I, I, I don't know how else to explain it. It's just been textbook defense. Yeah, and those aren't always the most enjoyable games to watch from at home, but uh, definitely for those that love basketball and respect effort, this is definitely a game you gotta love and a game that you'll always remember. Davis makes the second free throw. Wolverines up to Colette down low. A nice backdoor cut, and it gives the Aggies the lead, 43-42. It's Nelson bringing it down into the front court for UVU, down one. Williams, right wing. Davis, down low to Nelson. High post on the block. Got the double team. Yep, double team. Out to Williams. Back down to Nelson. Gets it to Evans. One dribble up, and he's blocked by Colette. Again, that length of Colette is just bothering Brendan tonight as, you know, Coach Morrill's going to take a timeout with two minutes to go. 42-43. We're going to take a break. So timeout by Utah State. You're listening to Wolverine Basketball here on 960 The Zone. They've been running forever. Yeah, we obviously we've been talking a whole game about there hasn't been a whole lot of easy baskets. That's because, you know, both teams are so familiar with each other with the different sets and actions that they run on offense. And uh, yeah, that's that play that Collette got his layup on. It was one that, you know, the Aggies and the Wolverines have been running for the past 10 years. and I. I saw my dad look over at Stu and, uh, or Coach Morrill and just kind of smile, and Coach Morrill just kind of gave him a wink to say, <laughs> yeah, I got you on that one. 
Aggies with the ball up one with under two minutes to go now. It's Bolton into the right elbow. Now it's Moore to Perry. Colette swinging it to Smith. He'll dribble to the top of the key. A lot Had of Colette for a moment. There, yeah. Colette is trying to spin in. Offensive foul! That's and Colette's done. Five, yep. That'll be number five on Colette there. And uh, that's a huge play as, as you mentioned to start the broadcast tonight. The Aggies don't have much size after him. They're going to have to go to Sean Harris, who's 6'7". I mean, I'm maybe 5'9", so that's still pretty tall. But in terms <laughs> of basketball length. Yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting. Hopefully, Brendan can then create a little space for himself and not have the, the Colette length to bother him to, to get an easy basket, basket for the Wolverines. Davis in the front court. Wolverines trail by one. 90 seconds left. Bruniel. High post to Evans, down low to Williams. It's poked away and a foul called. That'll send Dante Williams, the Wolverines' best free throw shooter, to the free throw line for one and one. That was just an old school play right there by uh, Coach Hunsaker as he always tries to get guards to the free throw line late in the game and put a little pressure on the ref as Dante came over for a, a, you know, a strong post up. And when guards show physicality, that's not usually what we're known for. And so the refs think that there's you know too much contact and Dante Got the foul call right there. As he and the free throw is good for Dante. Williams tying it at 43. Who can execute down the stretch? You mentioned that youth to start the broadcast. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see if that services at all to finish this one out. Only two starters between the two teams as Williams makes the second free throw. Utah Valley with Nelson and Brumiel who started last season. Utah State with five players who did not start last year. 90 seconds to go. Wolverines up one. Got it. And we have a foul on Marcel Davis. Great. No. No, I think they're calling it on Jalen Moore right here. Or who are they calling this one on? No, they're going to put it on Marcel Davis as he tried to go in between the screen and the handoff. Looks like he might have, well, he got close to getting a steal, but he got whistled, and they're going to put Jalen Moore on the free throw line. He's 7 of 8. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that call. I mean, it's a little risky at this point in the game for Marcel to cheat over the play like that, but... uh. You know, something's got to trigger and, and finish this thing out for the Wolverines, and that would have been a huge play for them. That would have been a fast break bucket off a turnover. Instead, Moore makes the first free throw and makes the second. Aggies up by one, back and forth these last couple minutes. Fans on their feet. And the Aggies are going to drop back into that 1-3-1 one, one rubber band type zone defense here. And... Uh, Nelson. See if the Wolverines can get something going from the outside or, or get an offensive rebound off of a miss here with a minute left. 20 on the shot clock. Nelson, top of the key. Now it's Davis swinging it to Dante Williams. 15 on the shot clock. Now it's Brendan Evans on the baseline. Out to Williams. Crossover. Davis, 7 on the shot clock, and he's fouled. Great job. Great little hesitation step that he does so well to free himself and get a, get a quick first step on him. And, uh, again, those, those free throws that Arizona have – have moved over into this game as he's 4-4 four four from the line, and uh, he'll go ahead and knock these down as well. Four points, three rebounds, three assists for Davis. He's on the line for a pair as both teams are in the double bonus. Davis' first free throw is good, tying the game at 45. Yeah, well, the Wolverines all night, they haven't shot the best percentage, but they've all shot them like men. They've shot them confidently, and uh, you have to be tough enough to miss them sometimes. Misses the second. We are tied at 45 with 47 seconds to go. Aggies with the basketball. I don't know Time if Morrill Moral is going to go with the timeout here. I was questioning if he's just going to let him play, but uh, he's going to draw something I was something thinking up. the same thing, if they were going to uh, let him play or take the timeout. Last timeout, they drew up that play to Colette. Exactly, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if they, they've always got something new up their sleeve, especially when you're trying to win the ball game. You know, it's so early in the season that – that teams don't want to give up their plays and offenses because, you know, there's so much scouting now that goes on in the game and everybody has access to the films. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what, you know, Coach Morrill can draw up for, for his Aggies and we'll see what defense maybe the Wolverines come out with. I don't see them changing up anything. They'll probably stick to a straight man-to-man -man as, uh, as they have done and have traditionally done to finish out games. But uh, we'll see what they got drawn up. 43 seconds left. Tied at 45 in the second half, I'll add. <laughs> and uh, both teams in the last couple minutes 
their points have been coming from the free throw line. Yeah, they have. Is. Minus that Colette bucket. I can't remember another basket that was made in the half-court offense. Both teams have been drawing fouls. UVU's played great defense. They need a stop on this possession. The whole building on their feet right now trying to add a little spark to the Wolverines to finish this thing out. 30 seconds left, 15 on the shot clock, more right wing. Now it's Perkins backing up about five feet off the three-point line. Harris sets the screen, it's Moore. Pump fake, one dribble, shot is up, nothing but net. Jalen Moore from the right wing. Great pump fake there to get Brandon off of his feet. Doesn't look like Coach Sunsaker's gonna go with the timeout here, he's just gonna play the game. It's Bruniel to Evans. Left elbow, handing it off to Davis at the three-point line. Down low to Nelson, stolen by Moore and fouled by Marcel Davis. Yep, they had Zach Nelson on the block right where they wanted him, and uh, unfortunately, Zach pulled out of the pass and didn't come meet it. And Jalen Moore made a great play, but, but again, there's still eight seconds left in this ball game as Jalen goes to the line to shoot two, and uh, there's still a lot of basketball to be to be played and anything can happen in those last eight seconds. Utah Valley still with three timeouts. 47-45, Moore has missed a free throw. He's nine of 10 though, 13 points. He struggled shooting from the field, but he has delivered from the free throw line and that big bucket to put him up by two. You know, and that's what leaders of your teams do. They, they find different ways to get it done. If he's not scoring the ball real well from the perimeter or making a lot of shots, he's found his way to the free throw line as Coach Hunsaker calls a timeout here to, to see what we're gonna do in those last eight seconds. But uh, yeah, going back to Jalen Moore, you know, 13 points and seven rebounds, still looks pretty good from the stat line there, but he has struggled from, from the field. But uh, like I said before, good players find ways to get it done. With Colette fouling out a few minutes ago with only six points and six rebounds, Jalen Moore stepped up big for the Aggies. Ideally for UVU, what do they need to do if Moore misses here, are they gonna just play out or are they gonna move it into the front court and call a timeout and drop a play? Well, you know, with the way the, the Revs have been calling it, you know, as they've kind of let it go this second half around the rim, hey, you know, you wanna take advantage of kind of the, the non-constructed defense on the other end. Don't let them get set back into that 1-3-1, which would be extremely hard to put any pressure to the rim. I think the Wolverines are, are just going to go with it. I think they'll attack it off of a miss. Uh, we'll see if it's a made basket. Maybe Coach Sensei will try to get some type of catch around half court and call a quick timeout. As uh, I'm not sure how many timeouts each team has left. Uh, Utah Valley has two timeouts left, and Utah State with one. But, uh, yeah, it can go either way, and it's, it's a tough decision to make. Jalen Moore's first free throw is no good. 47-45, even with a make here, Utah Valley can equalize with a three. Yeah, Alex Carr looked back at, at Coach Hunsaker there, and Coach Hunsaker said, let's go. So I think they're going to go with it, but uh, Coach Merle decided against it as he stops play there at the timeout. If you're Utah State, do you full court press, or do you sit back on what you've been playing for most of the game? Well, most of the game they've shown that three-quarter court kind of just token pressure to slow the tempo of the game. And I think that's what they're going to show here because, you know, you can't really get a fair run at the, at you know, up the court. And uh, it makes any type of deep passing extremely difficult because you, it's hard to make the reads, you know, kind of like a quarterback will have to do as, as Zach is probably going to do from the inbound pass. But uh, I see them just going with what they have been, just that three-quarter court token pressure to slow slow uh, probably Marcel or Dante or even Alex Carr who gets the ball here is actually Marcel is out of the game I'm sorry uh, for this play as he, he has fouled out from the ball game but uh, um, yeah it'll be interesting to see who who takes this one and uh, as Utah State comes out showing man-to-man -man pressure but it is full court Dante's going to try to get a catch on the run. And Dante has it. Go. He has made a three-pointer, and he's fouled. I was wondering if they were going to do that. Yeah, it's interesting. It was still with five seconds left in the game. You put a lot of pressure on the free throw shooter, and then the question in your mind, you, you try to miss that second one, or what do you do? But, you know, knowing you know Coach Hunsaker's philosophy and strategies, you go up there and you shoot them to make them and we'll foul and try to play the next piece out. 
First free throw is good for Dante Williams. Williams has 13 points. Perfect from the free throw line at three of three. And his second free throw is good. Utah Valley is going to take a timeout. They have one more remaining. They trail by one with five seconds left. You know, there's been so many close games in the past with Utah State. And, you know, this one, you know, there's still so much to do and so much to play, but to lose this one, the, how well the Wolverines have played and, you know, their toughness defensively. And, again, with, with both teams coming off of, you know, four-game losing streaks to show the confidence and poise that they have tonight, you know, is, is, is tough to see. But, but, again, you don't know. We Last year we had our uh, Seattle University game when there was two seconds left and we were down by one. And you never know what happens. A crazy play with a loose ball. And, and Mitch picked it up and got fouled and, you know, made two free throws to win the game for us. So games are never over. And, no. uh and, and even even if Utah State gets this pass in, they still need to make two free throws because if they only make one, then they can't foul. Exactly. And, uh, you know, going back to our free throw struggle, it's been Smith and Moore who's done the bulk of the free throw shooting here as they go deep for the pass. And Wolverine try to get a foul call as they both fall. And, and there's a dunk by Utah State. Utah Valley players fell. There's still two seconds left on the game clock. With, UVU's got to call a timeout here as uh, 1.6 seconds to see what we can get drawn up. Utah, Fa Utah Valley tried to commit that foul after the pass, you know, was caught about three-fourths of the way down the court. Didn't get it, then they slipped, which led to the Utah State dunk. I think there's definitely going to be a review of the clock here as uh, they go to the monitor to check out to see what, how much time they're going to put on that game clock. It did seem like a lot of dribbling and a lot happened within that five seconds, but uh, hopefully for Wolverines. The Utah State coaching staff, I'm reading some lips over here, they're kind of discussing whether or not they're going to foul or just let them huck one up. Yeah, at this point you probably would just, uh, you know, because if they huck one up or, or throw a long pass and it just gets tipped, it can definitely just kill the time that way. You know, why let the Wolverines get all the way down to the free throw line with a chance to miss it, to tip it in real close to the rim. But There is the risk, too, that if Utah Valley throws it down and they try to commit yeah, that foul could. and exactly. he's in the free shooting free motion. That's a great point right there, too. Still hope, though, 1.6 seconds. That's, uh, that's quite a bit of time in basketball. You can probably get two dribbles off and the shot with 1.6 seconds. That's right. I mean, you know, point four, right? Is that what the NBA has put on a limit more than you can get an actual shot off? So 1.6 seconds should be, you know, plenty of time. But with both teams out of timeouts, there's really no look of a play to kind of to throw a quarterback or a bullet past the half court and call a quick timeout to get a better passing angle or to advance the basketball in any way. So it's going to have to be a, you know, a Hail Mary type of play here to, to try to send this thing into overtime. It's a shame that someone has to lose this game because both teams have played so well defensively and it just really came down, in my opinion, to a few free throws and a few late game plays. Yeah, it has been all free throws with the Wolverines 12 or 20 right now. We uh, would do anything for a couple of those back. And, uh, you know, with Jalen Moore finishing out the, the second half and making all of his free throws, and I, and I think you know, Peary has played a really good game, added stability, and made shots when Utah State didn't have anything. And uh, the refs have added two tenths of a second. Okay. It's 1.8 seconds left. Probably can get in a third dribble now with those extra two seconds. They said that they have, just for listeners of the radio, we have Mitch Brunil under our basket all the way down, 95 feet away from the basketball, and with uh, Dante Williams at the top of the key, and Jaden and Alex. In the backcourt there is Zach throws a lob to we got a clock mess up here. We're gonna redo that sequence as the horn went off before Zach even released the basketball. Right. Refs are at the scorer's table. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we are just gonna redo this as he started the clock even before Zach released the ball. I don't know if he if he thought the ball got inbounded as Zach took off running, but uh they triggered it right away. 
Yeah, Coach Morrow definitely not too happy about that one as the Wolverines are going to get a second chance to draw things up here. But uh, I wish I had the rule book on hand. Yeah, I know. It's kind of you feel like you're in your backyard, like, oh, well, we started the clock literally. Let's just let's just do that again. <laughs> But I think it's what it's going to look like. I don't have the answer to this, but I wonder, and I'm just throwing this out there in wondering why Stu Morrill is talking with the officials. Maybe if you run baseline, that starts the clock. No, no, it doesn't. Not until someone on the court touches, touches the, the basketball yeah. does that clock start. I think he's just so irritated and upset because, again, we're going to get a second chance at this lob pass here as, as Jalen and the ball scrambled at half court. And Mitch throws it up. Off the back iron, I don't know if that would have counted. But that was a good attempt from Mitch Bernil and the Wolverines come up just a little short. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. As some of the assistant coach, sorry for that pause there, got a little upset with the clock guys and uh, definitely not the place to go as a professional, as an assistant coach there to say anything to the clock guys as they have so much pressure on themselves as it is. And... Uh, Anyway, again, a tough loss here tonight for the Wolverines is the final score, Utah State 50, Utah Valley 47.